So now I want to go over some definite integral examples. And notice the difference between an indefinite and a definite integral example. Um, in a definite integral, we have a upper limit and we have a lower limit. And our lower limit is always the number below the integral. In this particular example, it happens to be a 2. And our upper limit is always the number on top of the integral. And in this example, which happens to be a 3. Um, so let's just get started right away with this example. Uh, here we have the integral from 2 to 3 of 2x plus 3 dx. And I wrote the steps for you on the left-hand side of the screen. And our first step is to integrate. And this is a very basic integral example where we simply just have to add 1 to the exponent and divide by the same. Um, so if we're going to integrate 2x, uh, the x has an exponent of 1. So after we integrate it, the exponent of 1 is going to become a 2 exponent. And we always divide by the same plus the integral of 3, which is just simply 3x. And instead of putting a plus c, like you would to finish an indefinite integral, for a definite integral, I like to put a line. And at the top of the line, I would put my upper limit, which is 3. And at the bottom of it, I put my lower limit, which is 2. And we're going to have to plug this upper limit and lower limit into our x but before we do that, I'm going to simplify this a little further. Notice in our first term how our 2's cancel, and the only thing we're left with is a x squared. Our 3x stays the same, and our upper and lower limit also stay the same. So now we can move on to step number 2, and we can plug in our upper limit. So what we want to do is, is take our upper limit of 3 and plug it in everywhere there's an x. Um, so instead of writing an x squared, I'm going to write a 3 squared. And instead of writing a plus 3 times x, I'm going to put 3 times 3. And then moving on to our last step, we want to subtract our lower limit. So I'm going to subtract all of this and then I'm going to plug in our lower limit everywhere there is an x. Um, so instead of writing a x squared, I'm going to put a 2 squared. And instead of putting plus 3 times x, I'm going to put a plus 3 times 2. And now we just need to do some multiplication, addition, and subtraction. In our first parentheses, we have a 3 squared, which is 9, plus 3 times 3, which is 9. So 9 plus 9 is going to be 18. And in our second parentheses, we have a 2 squared, which is 4, plus 3 times 2, which is 6. 4 plus 6 is 10. And of course, 18 minus 10 is just 8. And this is our final answer. So here are some more videos with some more example problems related to the video you just watched. I really hope you're finding my tutorials helpful. So until my next video, I will see you later.